So welcome everyone to our School Booster today on hybrid meetings, a very, a very interesting topic that, uh, yeah, quite a few people have registered. So uh, great to have you all here today. Welcome to those that are new to Productivity Ninja and us at Think Productive and a warm welcome to all of you that have come back uh, from previous workshops. So looking forward to spending the next 30 minutes with you and uh, let's kick off. So my name is Gavin Nelson. I am a Productivity Ninja based in Sydney. Uh, we've got a, a small but powerful team here in New South Wales. And let me, sorry, I'll just get my pointer on the right screen here. Oh, technology. Here we go. And this is how you can get in touch with me. So. Uh, yeah, having, having a bit of fun in this photo. We do like to have fun at Think Productive and my one photo was a ninja. But please make a note of my email address. I've also put it in the chat. So please feel free to use the chat. This is a one-way webinar, so that's my way of hearing from you. Any questions, I'll keep referring to. But uh, I'll bring this slide up again later in case um, you do want to contact me about anything post-webinar. So let's kick off. A um, bit of an introduction on Think Productive. We're a global training business based off the, the best-selling book uh, from uh, Graham Alcott, which is um, fantastic. You will get access to that through the Academy. For those of you that haven't got access, we'll give you three months access post this webinar, registering you on your email address. So please keep a look out probably uh, sometime this afternoon or tomorrow morning. It may go to spam. So uh, let me know again if you haven't got it. But a bit, bit about me, I, I loved uh, the book, I loved the workshops as a client of uh, Productivity Ninja. And so I joined, I became certified and really enjoying running workshops and, um, and you know, hopefully making a difference to people in their work and, and personal lives, as it did to me, uh, some of these concepts that were, were just incredible when I, um, I went through the workshops. You know, zero inboxes is probably my highlight. So you'll get the membership to the Academy. And um, let's get back to the subject today, which is a hybrid meeting. This is an example. There's people present, there's people online. Uh, we've got a whole range of uh, different ways of communicating, obviously technology being a big part of it. So it is a real challenge, as I'm sure you're aware, and hence joining the webinar. What we want to do today is, is talk about both the challenges and, and just get uh, a snapshot of what are the key challenges so we can guide this to you, but also what do we do with those challenges? And what are the opportunities that maybe we can further maximize with hybrid working? So what I'd like you to do now, if you can, is just in the chat, uh, hopefully to all um, attendees, but just uh, type in what's your biggest challenge? What are you finding really challenging at the moment uh, in, in the um, hybrid meeting world, either running a hybrid meeting or attending a hybrid meeting? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I. I'll read these out. Some of you are just typing to me. That's fine. It's um, yeah, really difficult to interact with people. Absolutely. And we'll talk a lot about that on this short webinar today. We also are hearing there's a different experience for people that are in the room and those that are virtual. So um, yeah, thank you for, for the comments in the chat box. Keep them coming. A delay between face-to-face -face and online. Interesting, Kerry. Yeah. Um, Poor sound, unable to hear, getting the balance between in-person and equitable input from virtual attendees. And that's right on what we'll be talking about today, open communication. So I'll come back to those uh, as well later. And certainly if you have any questions, pop them in the chat, feel free. But what are we covering today? So the agenda is, we'll, we'll look at the challenges, a lot of which you've, you've already mentioned, but um, uh, we'll, we'll give you a list of what we think the key challenges we're hearing from our clients. And um, you know, what do we do with that? How do we, how do we sort of process that as we go through? What is um, all the confusion we're calling it, bit of a new word, the, the different ways of communicating, we'll talk about that. Collaboration is, is huge, but what is the cost of it? And what's the right level of collaboration versus working? We'll go through that. So some really interesting content here that um, we're, we're gonna share with you today. And some models like the four Ps that, um, you, know, you, you might be doing all of or some of, but um, great model for any meeting uh, and particularly hybrid to get around some of these challenges. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> one, one comment. Yeah, thanks Bernard. Differentiating, 
differentiating between valid communication and noise. Absolutely. And this comes back to the cost of collaboration. I'll also share some other tips. So let's get into it. The challenges of hybrid meetings. Well, Aristotle is known for saying man is by nature a social creature. So we are social. Uh, as we're more and more hybrid, working from home or working from another location, as I am today in, in a, a shared space in Sydney, we're, um, we're not interacting with people as much or in the same way. And we'll talk a lot about that. So really challenging. Uh, it's easy to put in, into the too hard basket, but um, yeah, there's a lot of things we can do about that. But it's a real problem for us as social creatures. The second challenge a lot of you are commenting on in the chat as well is that um, we do miss being in the office. So how do we try and replicate the in-person experience for those that are uh, in a hybrid environment? So this research was from Boston Consulting Group. It was from their Workforce Sentiment Survey in 2020. And it talks about the top three things that what we miss about being in the office is the informal, the social interactions, the corridor lunch lunchroom type conversations, or even just um, talking to people in an open plan environment. The in-person collaborating and brainstorming. So, you know, the, the fact that body language is most of communication as we know. So how do we replicate that when we might see a face on a Zoom or a Teams call, but we, we probably can't see uh, the way they're sitting or I'm actually standing for this. We'll talk a bit about that as well. And lastly, in-person formal meetings. So isn't it interesting that people um, get so much out of meetings, but often, and um, you know, personally I've found this many times, it's actually the before and the after the in-person meeting that is so powerful, right? The connecting as you're walking in the room or out of the room, setting up another meeting, following up an action with someone. You know, that, that is key. And obviously that's why we encourage chat on these type of forums and on all of our workshops, because at least we can try and um, have a bit of uh, connection outside the core content. But yeah, this, this is a real issue. And then the top, top three experiences people are um, missing being in the office. So we really need to watch these. The th next uh, challenge is around our brain. And we talk a lot about our brains, as a lot of you know, in our workshops and, and what to do about helping our brains manage. But the sheer fact is, it's actually a struggle. We're so overwhelmed with information. Yeah, you're working from home or somewhere else and you can be probably a little bit more um, compartmentalized but you're actually getting all the information you got in the workplace through whatever form, and you're also getting other distractions, you know, whether uh, you know, it's the domestics or the, uh, the noise or um, obviously a lot of interruptions that we get um, in, in our non-office workplace. So there are distractions, and what we do is we just react to that. The flight or fight syndrome, the reptilian brain, uh, has this tendency to obviously react to any of these distractions or to all the overwhelm, we, we have to, right? Otherwise, um, we, we wouldn't operate. So our brains are struggling. Now, the, the next thing we wanted to talk about was um, a bit of research. And I'll actually read this quote, but our brains are struggling to keep up under you know, the overwhelm that we talked about, fatigue and burnout, and maybe working longer hours and not taking breaks as we might do if we're in an office environment. Back-to-back um, -back Zoom calls, we're hearing a lot. Distractions, and we've talked about that. So this quote, I'll read it out to you because it's quite interesting. It's from Professor Michael Sailing, who's a neuropsychologist at the University of Melbourne and Austin Health. And his quote is, expansion of the information age has happened so fast, it's bringing us face-to-face -face with our brain's limitations. Just because our computer devices have perfect memories, we think we should too. And uh, it's so true, right? Because, um, and again, you know, this is one of our principles we, we live by as having this second brain to store things so that we, we can try and bring information up. But the sheer fact is we can't remember everything that, that our uh, computers do. So it's really leading to being an always on attitude and, and actually you know, brain malfunctions. So this is something we need to bear in mind. And uh, we've got obviously some tips to help you with this today. The next challenge is what we call micro silos or proximity bias. And I'm not sure if you've heard the terms before. And um, I am, um, sorry, I just had, I'm um, just distracted by a comment. Um, can't see me on the video. It might be a settings issue. 
If you can see me on the video, can you please just type in yes or can see? Um, I'm not sure if it's one person or more. But uh, yeah, one person that says I can't see my, my face and that method of communication. Can anyone see me on the video? I'm taking that's a no. Um, well, my apologies. I won't distract us with. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, it appears that you can't see me. So it seems to be frozen. Not, not sure um, what's going on there. My apologies. I don't know if the recording can uh, fix that. I can see my own window, but for some reason it's not, it's not showing. I'll press on. The micro silo and proximity bias. So that's that's coming into play. The way we we have a tendency, and I guess it's unconscious bias in the world of that area. But it's basically about asking yourselves: Are the people that are in the office for the meeting getting favourable treatment of some sort? And do they have more access to people you know, before or after meetings, or even other decision makers? So that's a really important point to. Uh, thank you for confirming the audio is fine. To, to remember and to be careful of, particularly when running hybrid meetings. So is this occurring for us? Is it occurring for our teams? Um, maybe we can have some real conversations with our, uh, the people in our meetings just to make sure. And, and often it's a case of checking in. So that, that's another challenge. The last one is camera fatigue, which you won't have on this webinar. As some of you, most of you can't see me, it appears. But uh, being, being on, being... Uh, aware that the fact that people can see your face and uh, and it's just your face, so you're sort of mindful of that. And it's, it's called camera fatigue, being, feeling like you're always being watched by, by cameras. So a lot of people are, are aware of this, and I'm sure we've all been in meetings where some have cameras on, some have cameras off, and, and we'll come back to this with some of the tips we have today. But uh, definitely think about this when we're, we're looking at the way we set up our meetings, um, and you know, do, do cameras need to be on or not? And if they don't, maybe we can give people a break from um, not having to look at the camera and be camera ready. So yeah, have an experiment. Um, certainly when there's a need for conversation or interaction, uh, you know, speaking to the camera as the leader of the meeting or the speaker in the meeting, and that gives an indication that you're about to speak and uh, vice versa, right? If you have a question, Great to turn your camera on and that'll pop up as we know in Zoom or Teams. So just to be mindful of the challenge of camera fatigue. So that, that's some of the challenges and getting us thinking about how do we interact with those challenges. Let, let's actually move to technology here and an item on our agenda called confusion. What is confusion? Well, it's essentially the fact that there are so many ways to communicate and multiple ways to communicate with the same person. And I've certainly experienced this, I'm not sure if everyone else has, but it is, um, it is uh, just reading the chat. So thank you, audio is fine for some. Hopefully you can all hear me okay. Um, is, uh, is really tricky. And, uh, and I mean, I've got a situation at the moment where a, a client is um, preferring to text, but obviously text only works for some forms of communication. So I, I run Teams meetings, I use email, but clearly there's, there's a lot. Um, so this is actually part of a workshop we run called Supercharge Your, Your Team Comms um, that uh, is relatively new. But we talk about the fact that there's so many ways to communicate, people just become confused, overloaded and overwhelmed, and it adds to some of the issues with hybrid working. So if you think you have a, a comms tool overload, uh, I'm going to show you something now that we, we run as an exercise. And this is a comms tool audit. So it's an activity we do in this workshop that we run and we get attendees to audit their, uh, their tools, what's useful, downsides. Um, we're obviously not going to do this on the webinar today, but feel free to um, send me an email. My email's in the top of the chat, or uh, I'll share it again later if, um, if you'd like a copy of this, this slide. But um, essentially, just think about the different tools that you and your team are using. Uh, what is useful? What's preferable? Um, I know people, I've asked this, and it's amazing what people actually prefer to do, and it makes life easy, right? You, you communicate in their, their world and their mode. 
So, um, and, and yeah, what are the downsides is really important. So hopefully that's uh, one of the takeouts from today that you can think about and possibly um, chat to your uh, other fellow hybrid meeting attendees with. Let's talk about the cost of collaboration. We're all about collaboration. We have to in a hybrid world because we don't have uh, everything that we, we've talked about before. But there is a cost to it. And the cost is quite significant. This research is from the Harvard Business Review. So it's Dr. Sel Sansa at Harvard University that did this research. And what Dr. Sansa said was that it's actually taking over the workplace that we're experiencing. So 80% of our time spent collaborating on meetings, phone calls, emails, and of course, Zoom or Teams calls. So even though it's really important, it's very costly. That only leaves 20% to get work done. So uh, reinforces why we need to make sure all of our hybrid meetings, and I guess all meetings, are really effective um, because there, there's a real downside here in, in taking so much share of people's time. And um, it's a really interesting subject if any of you want to um, learn more about this. But if we can even reduce the time in the meeting, we'll talk about some tips now to, to help you do that. I have implemented some of these and they work incredibly well. Um, easy tips to free up more time for getting the real work done. So again, I can send you the link to this uh, research if anyone would like, just email me. So um, I'll move on in the interest of time and get to some of these tips, but that's the, the cost that we're looking at of collaboration. All right, so let's, uh, let's move now to some of the tips we promised you and some things we'd love to share. The first one is a model that we, we use called the four Ps, which is a really effective way of setting up and starting a meeting. So what it is, is purpose, plan, protocols, and people. So this uh, is the way we like to start all of our uh, meetings, particularly hybrid, is a useful model for, for ground rules, right? So purpose, share, and, um, uh, share the purpose, talk about the plan for today, what protocols we'll be running, and what people. So let's start with purpose. So what we want to do here is we want to ensure that uh, we've got a very clear agenda. So the purpose of this webinar today is, is to share some of the challenges, tips and tools, um, hear from you through the chat as far as anything that you'd like uh, us to help or focus on, and, um, and hopefully give you something you can act on immediately that's going to make a difference for your hybrid meetings today and onwards. So that's the purpose. Um, the next slide is around the plan. So what's the plan? Um, talk about the breaks. Is there going to be food if it's over an hour? People are probably wondering if there's a coffee break, um, obviously bathroom break and so forth. Um, but but what, is, what is the plan? What's the plan for a hybrid meeting? Are we going to actually stop and um, stretch uh, after you know, at least 15, 20 minutes? People need to have a physical break. Uh, and, and we'll talk a bit about ways of doing that as well. You know, certainly what we'll, we'll finish with, we'll make sure we let you out early because you've got another meeting probably to attend to at 10.30 this morning, that type of thing. So very simple, but putting a fair bit of thought into it. The next one is protocols, which is really interesting for a hybrid meeting. Because they're different, right? If you're in the room or if you're um, in a different environment to, to other people. You know, what are, what are some of the protocols um, obviously turning up on time, who's taking notes? And one really good example here is uh, of best practice is to, to take the notes on the screen. It could be in the chat, but uh, it can also be in a shared document if uh, you're not presenting anything. Share a Google Doc or just a, you know, a Microsoft Office document and take the notes as you go. Very, very powerful, simple to do. Uh, and then the, the note taker doesn't have extra work to do after the meeting as it's all done. But yeah, what, what reading material was expected to be read, uh, if that's important for this meeting. Um, certainly cameras on, cameras off, obviously we've, we're talking about that you don't need your camera on for this webinar today. You can just watch and listen. And um, using, using the chat, obviously, we really want to encourage. Um, but you know, te technology, if you're not using the chat, let people let people off. And we just really want to connect and look at you and brainstorm some ideas on a whiteboard. The last point on this slide is elephants in the room. Now, you know, my example here is you've just got an email from uh, you know, an announcement, for instance, of something that we're all thinking about. And 
if people are going to be busy chatting to each other privately, then we might as well just talk about this new company announcement or, or some exciting news or, or something that just needs to be covered um, and, and let people you know, um, process that before we get into the, the, the subject matter. So it's a bit like the meetings that you go to in person where people ask you to turn your phone off or some people get them to put it in a bucket. Um, you know, do laptops need to be open? Are you expecting a personal call, that type of thing? So protocols sound straightforward, but there's a fair bit there. The last one, but not least, is the people. Who are the right people? If they're not all here for this hybrid meeting, then you know, do we wait? How long do we wait? Do we postpone the meeting as a courtesy to those that are here and uh, have got other things to do? So uh, also... Okay, moving along, we're doing really well for time, is other tips that we want to share for virtual or hybrid meetings. So today's about hybrid meetings, but we're all familiar with the setting. Um, you know, everyone's getting better with technology now, but um, you know, there's, there's a lot to be said for dressing for the meeting, uh, feeling like you're, you're working, and, um, and, and but certainly being, being aware. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, something. <laughs> No one wants to be caught out on. The other example is when stuff happens. And I'm not sure how many of you have seen this. Happy to send you the clip if you'd like it. But it's a BBC News presenter. His child walked in. And what's interesting here is not that what happened. This has occurred to me in uh, early days of, of video calls, uh, is the way people react to it. And that just puts you at ease. So this presenter did a great job. He was talking about something in Iran. It was a pretty heavy, heavy duty subject. And he just moved on really well, acknowledged, yeah, my, my son's gone now. Whatever you want to do, dog barking, bird chirping, whatever it is. So um, I've got a renovation happening next door, which is why I'm in the city today. And, and uh, I, um, I sometimes just ask people, you know, I, can you hear that? And often they actually say no. So you might be thinking it's really distracting, but the other person's totally fine. So acknowledge stuff happens and move on from it. Now, here's a number, number of tips as well that uh, I referred to that I'd, I'd share with you today. So one is an amazing principle is stopping at the 25-minute the mark. Uh, I'll, I'll stop early today, but it might not be five minutes, but um, certainly add in that for setup and allow it for the end of the call. Stand up as I'm doing today. It's amazing for your energy and uh, when we're sitting down on computers in our hybrid office. Check in, do an opening round. Where are you at? Uh, use the chat I've talked about, and I've also talked about taking notes on screen. So there's some tips that hopefully help you with today. So I'm going to start to wrap up now. This is a snapshot. We'd love to cover so much more that we do in our other workshops, but, um, but hopefully you've got some immediate things to act on there. Please either um, uh, take a photo of that or um, I'll send you this. Uh, I'll pop it in the chat as far as the, uh, the URL. And just we'd love your feedback on the whole concept of these skill boosters. We've now run three and we're getting uh, great feedback, but um, we always strive to improve. So let me just pop the URL in the chat here. Okay, for those of you on a computer, I'll, I'll put two in. There is a bit of a delay here, so just that survey monkey one. Thank you. You appreciate your feedback. Really, really helpful to know. And just to wrap up on a couple of other uh, slides is I'm in an unfamiliar room here and I'm just trying to get my mouse going. <laughs> So here's some of the workshops that we're running that uh, you know, are quite um, in demand at the moment for virtual meetings, obviously, and fixing meetings and also leading hybrid teams. So let us know if uh, you'd like to talk to us about that. Um, and I will finish early in the best practice. I'm going to stay on for um, you know, 10, 15 minutes if anyone has any questions, and I'll just be on the chat. But um, again, please take a photo or uh, email me if you have any questions. Uh, and uh, if 
feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and please follow us at Think Productive on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you so much for joining. Looking forward to uh, sharing more, more short webinar skill boosters with you on our website on free stuff and have a wonderful productive Thursday in this short week. Thanks everyone for joining. Take care. Okay, I'm stopping recording. Thanks very much, Marion. Thanks, Rolla. Jeannie. Hey, Rachel. Yeah, really sorry the audio didn't work. That's um, strange. Um, that seemed to be mixed. Best way to minimise the bias in equity. Uh, Tony, great question. It's essentially checking in with people and you know, being aware is the first part of, of, um, of being careful with the bias. The second part is making sure the people that are in the room, if you've got half in the office where you are and half uh, remotely, are on the same page. So. to make sure everyone's on the same page and included. Um, number one tip out of the tips I've offered. Great question, Amanda. It probably would be um, the, the inclusion of people because nothing else works if people aren't feeling included. So for me, it would be the way I start the meetings. Obviously, being prepared is critical, but the way you start the meeting um, and, and kick off and allowing yourself some time to just connect with people in the first five minutes. That means being really well prepared, by the way, which, um, to be honest, um, I, I've scheduled an hour before this webinar to make sure that nothing could go wrong. And I had technology issues, even then, as they moved me into a different room. So being ready is um, yeah, a great question. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate your coming back. I'll just stick on it if anyone has any other comments. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks for joining. Have a great day. Cheers, Malcolm. Thanks, Victoria. Claire. Cheers, Debbie. Thanks, Amanda. See you next time. Ah, oh, it'll be wonderful. Sounds great, Karen.
einen 